Dr. Parak sir, good morning to you and GK Pillai. Morning sir, morning sir. Okay. Very good morning. Meghna ma'am, shall we start? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, Somna sir, shall we start? Let's, let's start, please. Yeah. Priyanka, please. <clears throat> Warm greetings and good morning to today's chief guest, Honorable Dr. Anil Sahastra Buddhesar, Chairman AICT, today's guest of honor, Dr. Parag Kalkar sir, Dean, Faculty of Commerce and Management, Mr. G.K. Pillai sir, Managing Director and CEO of Janam TV, our mentor, Honorable Dr. Somnath Patil sir, Secretary, Dr. D.Y. Patil Unitech Society, Dr. Meghna Bilari ma'am, Director and this conference convener of D.Y. PIMR, Dr. Vishal Vadaskar, sir, Associate Director, DYPIMR. I also welcome all head of the institutions under the umbrella of Dr. D.Y. Patil Unitech Society, my dear colleagues, dear participants and students. I, Dr. Priyanka Dut, feel privileged to extend warm welcome to all present here for the inaugural ceremony of AICT-sponsored two days national conference on redefining business management post-COVID technology and economic challenges. I'm glad to share that in this conference, more than 15 researchers across India would be sharing their views at this forum. And around 15 stalwarts from industry and academics are the part of this conference in different roles like guest of honor, keynote speaker and session chairs. It is time to start the proceedings of our conference by lighting the lamp. I would like to invite all dignitaries to join for virtual lamp lighting ceremony. Ya kunde tu tushar har dhavala Ya shubhra vasra vruta Ya vina varadand vandita kara Ya shveta padma शंकर प्रभृति भी देवै सदा वंदिता सामां पातु सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जाड़ा पहाड़ With this prayer, let's pray to God for the economic recovery post COVID nineteen crisis. To be sustainable and resilient. Dr. D.Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research is a comprehensive and student focused institute that work towards excellence in quality education, research and entrepreneurial development. With the vision of excellence in education, institute was established in 1994. Since then, DYPIMR has grown exponentially 
to emerge as one of the top management education institute across the globe. The institute offers most prestigious postgraduate degrees, Master of Business Administration, MBA in Digital Marketing, and Master of Computer Application, MCA. These courses are affiliated to Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. Savitri Bai Phule Pune University has honored the institute with the Best College Award. The institute has made its mark by excelling academics and research, and it continues to grow as a center of excellence in management education. The National Board of Accreditation, NBA, A grade by NAC, ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 14001-2015 certifications are testimony to our pursuit of excellence. So with this brief introduction of our introduction of Institute, now I take privilege to invite our own director, Dr. Meghna Bilarema, who is having more than 17 years of teaching experience in the area of accounting and finance. She is a member of Board of Studies at SPPU. She is also a research guide for SPPU. Ma'am has authored several books through her genuous intelligence. She has published several research papers in reputed national as well as international journals. Dr. Meghna Ma'am also possesses 16 years of teaching experience and association with DYPIMR. She is credited for bringing in several innovative and path-bringing practices in DYPIMR for the holistic development of budding managers. Now, I would like to request Dr. Meghna Ma'am for welcome address. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, good morning, respected Anil Sahastrabuddha, sir, Chairman AICT, Dr. Somnath Patil, sir, Dr. Parag Patitkar, sir, GK Pillai, sir, all the esteemed directors of our uh, institutes and academicians, participants, and researchers. I welcome you all to this two days national conference on redefining business management post COVID technology economic challenges sponsored by AICT. And I express my sincere gratitude to AICT for this sponsorship. We all have experienced uh, that in a uh, pandemic, that business had to make a lot of changes in the way of functioning in all aspects of operations. Even we ourselves have witnessed a lot of changes in our lifestyle, like opting for online shopping, going free, uh, cash free, and ultimately we realized that it's a, it has made our life very easy. Uh, in these uh, few industries, notably technology and healthcare, have benefited significantly from strong uh, tailwinds as a demand has been, uh, there are a lot for the issue from the products for conference call, home entertainment, to face mask and uh, vaccines. Uh, but the uh, survival of a startup and sustainability of small and medium uh, businesses is the major concerns which we need to address. Uh, though it has been a transition, but it's for sure that a post-COVID a return of business to as usual is not an option. In this, businesses are expected to re-engineer the way they are operate to build trust, create value for the society. And I think the year 2022 will be a historic in terms of changing the philosophy of business because in past uh, resilience was not a cost but uh, it's going to be looked up as asset now so uh, in this way we have arranged this two days conference and there are going to be a lot of deliberations and exchange and presentation of uh, ideas by enormous ideas by researchers and uh, it would be definitely benefiting our academicians and businesses as well so looking forward for enriched two days uh, knowledgeable uh, with all the mn speakers and enthusiastic researchers once again, I welcome you all to this conference and thank you for gracing this conference with your presence. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am, for your kind words. Now, I take privilege to introduce a visionary leader, true source of inspiration, a mentor for all of us, Honorable Dr. Somnath Patil, sir, Secretary, Dr. D.Y. Patil, Unitech Society. Sir is trustee and secretary at Dr. D.Y. Patil Vidyapet and Unitech Society. He is also a member of Senate and Management Council at SPPU. He brought a revolutionary technical transformation at the institutions by introducing complete digitization through in-house system. Result of this is helping all stakeholders for promoting research and innovations. Sir always motivates creativity and innovative research-based work. Sir is having rich experience in education, agriculture, and research and innovation. 
He believes to initiate change through dynamic education and wants to take his education empire to other location outside India. By having broader vision and idea, Sir has established DPU Foundation for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship to build ecosystem of incubation in DPU campus by providing startup services and intellectual property facilitation services. In these years, Sir looks forward to empowering the students. Now, I request Dr. Somnath Patil Sir for inaugural address. Uh, thank you for such an elaborate uh, introduction. I'm very humble. Um, a very good morning to all. I extend a very warm welcome to our chief guest, Professor Dr. Anil Sahasrabuddhe, Chairman AICT, guest of honor, Dr. Parag Kalkar, Mr. G.K. Pille, and all the researchers across the nation to, uh, to the AICT-sponsored National Conference on Redefining Business Management Post-COVID in Technology and Economics. As the pandemic is keeping people apart from more than a year, but education communities have been tackling this enormous challenges by continuously delivering their best. This conference aims to facilitate on an open and constructive dialogue between researchers and practitioners based on research and practical experiences, which foster a better understanding of the world's best practices in applying new technologies to thrive over the challenges and making business resilient. I'm sure this conference will provide a platform to the researchers to share their research ideas with academia and industry. Wishing you all a contented and a prolific learning. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for being with us and enlightening us with your kind words of wisdom and for being an ideal example of inspiration and motivation for all of us. Today, we have Honorable Professor Dr. Anil Sastrabuddhe, sir, Dr. Parag Kalkar, sir, and Mr. G.K. Pillai, sir. I would like to request Honorable Dr. Somnath Patil, sir, to virtually felicitate Professor Dr. Anil Sastrabuddhe, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to request Dr. Somnath Patil, sir, to felicitate Dr. Parag Kalkar, sir. I request Somnath, sir, to felicitate Mr. G.K. Pillai, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Meghna Bilare, ma'am, to felicitate Honorable Dr. Somnath Patil, sir. Thank you, one and all. In this two days conference, Dr. Shailesh Kasande, sir, CEO and Group Director, Surya Datta Group of Institutes, Dr. Uttam Kinange, sir, Professor, Karnataka University, Dharwad, Mr. Vikramjit Bhayana, Head Digital Marketing, Bajaj Alliance, General Insurance, Dr. Shilpa Nimbarkar, Head of Learning and Development, Fujitsu, India, would be sharing their views as a keynote speaker. And various directors from different management institutes would be, would be contributing as a session chair. And Dr. Neeraj Saxena, advisor AICT, Dr. N.J. Pawar, sir, Vice Chancellor, Dr. D.Y. Patil Vidyapit Pune, and Mr. Pankaj Divan, founder and CEO, Idea Labs Future Tech Ventures would be gracing valedictory ceremony of this conference. So we DYPIMR are really thankful to all these dignitaries for being a part of this conference. Now, I would like to request our HOD, HOD MCA, Dr. Shikha Dubey ma'am for further deliberations. Thank you, Priyanka. Experts say the new normal will be far more tech driven, presenting more big challenges. Technology has stepped into the breach and will continue to play a key role in educating future generations. In a world where knowledge is just a mouse click away, the role of educator must change too. To throw more light on this, 
we have with us professor anil sahastrabuddhe professor of mechanical engineering at iit currently the chairman of all india council for technical education professor anil sahastrabuddhe has held several important academic research and administrative positions at indian institute of science bangalore tata consulting engineers northeastern regional institute of science and technology itanagar iit guwahati and coep pune prior to joining as aict chairman as an academician and researcher in naist and iit guwahati and as director at coep he has taken up several new initiatives of academic curricular and co curricular activities entrepreneurship research and good governance he has been an architect of reforms in technical education at aict which include mandatory student induction and internship faculty certification and atal faculty development programs creating first ever india's mooc platform swayam examination reforms innovation movement series of hackathons indian knowledge systems new funding schemes for supporting students faculty and institutes he is chairman basic scientific research bsr empowered committee of ugc and swayam board he is a fellow of iist iit institution of engineers and ina he has been bestowed with several awards which include maha entrepreneur award of praj industries jeevan gaurav puraskar lifetime achievement award from mit world peace university mahatma gandhi leadership award from indian achievers forum and csr times he has also been conferred ravi national fellow award by aims i would request sir to please enlighten us with his words <clears throat> thank you very much uh, a very good morning to you all namaskar i am very pleased to be here on this occasion of inauguration of two days national conference on redefining business management post covid technology and economic challenge and we have with us uh, very eminent people on the dais here which is a virtual dais of course mr gk pillai managing director and ceo of jaram tv and many other organizations that he heads he is an industry partner very important thing and an academician uh, dean dr para kalkar dr somnath patil who has been driving this institution from the front end so that the college and university keeps on growing in size dr meghna bilare the director of the institution and also the co conference coordinator and all other dignitaries uh, who are going to speak on this particular platform in terms of keynote lectures attendees whose papers are going to be presented young students and faculty members who are here to listen to this very important initiative undertaken by dr divay patil institute of management and research in association with in a way aict also because it is aict supported national conference uh, welcome to you all on this occasion and we are at a crossroads the very title itself shows we are talking about redefining business and it is not just business in the sense of uh, where we talk about the industry the sales the marketing that is certainly a business but business is in terms of all variety of activities have got transformed unfortunately due to the covid many situations arose where we had to innovate we had to change we had to transform and that is what again reminds me of a very famous word which was used quite often in the 80s and 90s called vuca world the world is volatile it is uh, uncertain it is complex it is ambiguous and the covid showed that all of that is in in inbuilt no one expected it was so complex it was uncertain suddenly it emerged and uh, volatile ambiguous we don't know what next will be done by the government whether a state government will allow movements in suddenly lockdowns so much of ambiguity existed in all these two years but when such challenges of vuca types come we adopt we accept we start changing ourselves our attitudes and then the important thing 
what I'm reflecting here is the words buka. Each one of them, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, start with V U C A. You reverse it. So ambiguity has to be accepted. You have to have a change in the attitude, adopt it in a manner that you can navigate through. And the next one in the reverse order is C, the complexity. We have no choice but to collaborate and cooperate. Without that, we couldn't survive. Uncertainty, yes, but with the unity of purpose and with untiring efforts, since that V is volatile, it will evaporate and we will be turning victorious and that's what happened you know the whole world when it was having this covid crisis some of the nations successfully navigated through created their own vaccines they had the, that v stands for vaccine also by the way volatility v reverse order vaccine which supported us and in terms of not only our country being supported but the rest of the world also got help from us and in the same time, around the same time, the new education policy, NEP 2020, also was announced. Uh, the COVID started around January, February, and in uh, July, we had our new education policy that also has gone through about one and a half years. And it talks about multidisciplinarity, which is so important. No business can be of a single discipline. You take about automobile, take aircraft, you take... Uh, the rail, you take uh, telecommunication, you take computers, you take all variety of businesses, there is multidisciplinarity involved in that. Maybe some engineering domain, some philosophical, psychological domain, economic domain. So I think uh, this multidisciplinarity is the focus of the new education policy. The second one is the choice for students. They can come in at any time and quit and come back again anytime. That means multiple entry and exit through a robust mechanism of academic bank of credits. You can store your credits. You can make use of them, like in a bank account. You know, This is very significant change from the past. And probably such a massive transformation or reform is not there even in the most advanced of the countries of uh, multiple entry, multiple exit, keeping the track of the credits, making use of them, not only in that institution, but in another institution if you want to be I think that is what is changing the landscape of education sector itself. And since we are talking about post-COVID, there are a variety of technologies, variety of uh, startups who have come up in the last two years, thanks to the, when, as I said, when the chips are down, we always try to come out, you know, like Phoenix and rise above. And uh, whether it is artificial intelligence, whether it is internet of things, whether it is machine learning, whether it is drones technology, whether it is uh, the robotics, each one of them have added value to the customer in terms of not only making the business much easier, ease of doing business, which we talk about, but also much easier, much cheaper. You know, that is what is happening. And therefore, affordability has increased. Take, for example, education itself. You have hardly any such kind of platforms which existed about, uh, about 10 years ago. Today, you go to the web and find out that there are hundreds of edutech companies who are providing state-of-the-art education in the domain of your choice. AICT and uh, Ministry of uh, HRD, then now Ministry of Education, we have got a platform called NEET, National Educational Alliance for Technologies. We are onboarding several technologies which are helpful for students to learn at their own pace. Depending on what is their prior learning, you are given direction based on AI techniques and you will be taken through the journey which is slightly different from each other and at the end outcome achieved is the same as far as every student is concerned. And this is the power of technology which we have been able to use in the education space itself. And uh, why not? And similarly, whether it is called as the sector specific education, but Technologies are useful for agriculture. We have seen how drones and robots are also useful, whether the pumps are operated using IoT devices at a given time, the exact quantum of water that is required to be fed, as well as uh, in the health sector in terms of delivery of uh, the medicines, the vaccines, all of that was possible thanks to the technology that has got emerged and developed, carrying different types of weights 
and all of that uh, is is going to be uh, our focus in this particular uh, our entire uh, activity that is happening during covid to now post covid one more interesting thing uh, which i would like to mention is not a new phenomenon for example we have also seen in industry that for every big industry there are several auxiliary industries which support you know they are the backbone uh, it is something like hub and spoke model and this model why can't it be used in education sector be it in the form of a development of a digital university where all variety of business management courses or engineering courses or even arts science all the courses are available as a entity and there are several spokes that means several faculty at different locations for experts in those domains come forward and try to support the university in the form of a hub and spoke model same like maybe tata motors or maybe bajaj or maybe uh, some uh, uh, piston com they all are having some auxiliary units who keep on giving material quality check of course will be there in the same way education can also be handled healthcare also can be handled in the same way and most importantly when the jobs were not there and many people went back to the villages there was a big transformation that is also happening in the rural area the rural sector that the economy in that place is also booming the reason is on one side prime minister often talks about doubling the income of the farmers it is not just through the agriculture sector but there are different possibilities starting of startups and they can increase their incomes and if they are doing it the migration that continuously happened in the last seven decades from the villages to the cities will have a reverse trend because in the cities we have a lot of pollution uh, the lot of traffic congestion so if some of these people who came from there want to return and there are opportunities for employment over there i think why not they will go back there and they will enjoy their life there and today facilities are getting made available be it transportation be it internet be it electricity in nooks and corners so you will have the same pleasure of uh, enjoying a movie from a netflix uh, in a city like pune or delhi or in in also a village you know when this is possible and when pure good quality atmosphere climate is there in the rural sector people will navigate and go over there and therefore how do we create business models where their products can be sold in an online platform and that is where again hub and spoke model you know some small startup in a city can make available a app which a farmer or a person in a village can make use of for selling their his or her product i think this is all possible through what we call redefining new businesses and how they are going to be created and making use of technology you know technology is the backbone today and and as far as the challenges are concerned we do have economic challenges because of the huge population that we have uh, we have 1.35 to 1.4 billion population naturally each one of them requires something to do jobs otherwise there will be chaos in the society and therefore rather than very large scale employment even a small sector msme or a startup creating 10 100 jobs and that is where the education that we are imparting in our colleges be it in arts commerce science and more important in engineering and management schools we must have a course on entrepreneurship and each student must be driven with the passion of doing something on his or her own creating 10 jobs 20 jobs and some of them i have seen in the last uh, one year of the pandemic you know post pandemic pre pandemic whatever you call it the number of unicorns that existed have rapidly increased today this year we had 41 new unicorns added that means despite the economy being down we in india have been able to create uh, attract funding and uh, the small businesses have turned out to become bigger and very soon i am sure the way our innovation uh, club uh, from whatever we call in institutions is driven by our national innovation foundation as well as uh, the mic that is ministry's innovation cell and as well as uh, support that is coming from niti aayog in terms of setting up of the incubators in the next 5 years we will have not necessarily one fold two fold three fold ten fold increase in the number of startups and uh, which already is increasing we are already the third largest uh, ecosystem in terms of startups i am sure we will be number one 
in terms of innovation we were at 81 we have gradually moved every year four five six steps and come to 46th position today. and in the next five years i see within top 10 to 20. so this is the prospect that i am seeing from the point of view of uh, the education sector the kind of support system that is getting developed and therefore it will percolate in all walks of life and once we start doing it in education sector whether it is engineering education or management education, it will percolate to, as I said, to school education also. The innovation will begin from there itself. And our businesses will get redefined. They will redefine the business. We, it's not uh, the, the government which will redefine. It is the people who, who will redefine business, the way it is managed. And economy will get transformed. Technology will further get developed. So my only appeal to all the people who are on the platform is, be a lifelong learner. Do not uh, think that I have got a PhD and I have done my master's and I know everything. You will not know anything if you keep quiet uh, for about just two years. You will become outdated, not useful for anyone. So lifelong learning, daily learning is also very fundamental and important for all educational institutions. So also for the industry, if they don't change, you know, I have seen many companies which have been wiped out because they did not transform. And that's why coming back to the hookah world, unless we accept that there are challenges and we start uh, innovating and we start uh, having collaborative approach uh, with an untiring effort, we cannot be victorious. With that, I conclude. Thank you very much for inviting me on this platform. And all the best wishes for all the paper presenters, learning lessons that you learn out of this, go back to your institutions and make use of the knowledge that you have gained from out of this conference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, you rightly enlightened us the true meaning of words like volatility, change, and adaptability, adaptability, which is changing the landscape and has laid its impact and have become the buzzwords. You also highlighted on the power of technology. And I'm happy to share with you, sir, that under the umbrella of SPPU and our management, we are trying our best to redefine our heights at DYPIMR and be a lifelong learner to throw more light on your words that we have no choice but to collaborate and coordinate. We have the best person, Dr. Parag Kalkar, sir, who is Dean, Faculty of Commerce and Management. Sir is a member of Management Council, Academic Council, and a Senate member at Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University. He has been a professor and director at Sihingar Institutes for many years. He has published more than 31 research papers in national and international research journals author and is a co-author of 14 books. He is executive board member of Association of Indian Management Schools and is associated with International Stress Management Association, India. He is a life member of ISDE, ICA, ISC, NIPM, NHRD, IIMA, Alumni Association. With this words, I request sir to please enlighten us with his words of wisdom. Thank you, madam, for your kind introduction. Thank you, sir. Honorable Dr. Anil Sahasrabuddha, sir, Chairman EICT, Dr. Somnath Patil, Secretary DY Patil Unit Society, Honorable Dr. G.K. Pillai, sir, Dr. Meghana Birale, Director of the Institute, and the participants who are present for this two days AICT sponsored national conference on redefining business management post COVID technology and economic challenges. I think as rightly shared by sir, with his guidance, I think with a lot of changes and with the support of Dr. Somnath Patil, sir, last year with your direction, we have started five new programs under MBA, that is MBA services management, MBA in sustainable management, MBA in digital marketing, MBA in FinTech, and MBA in project management under Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University. And we wish to start new innovative programs. I think one of these programs is also started in this DY Patel Institute. So we always think that the new models, since the new models of business are coming up, the organizations are becoming flat now, rather than tall organization, there are hardly any hierarchy in the organization. Recent Harvard study says that the working culture should be 3S to 2S to 2. We'll have a hybrid culture where three days you will work from home, 
two days, you will go to your offices to complete some compliances, have a physical meeting and uh, some discussion, signing some papers, and two days will be a weekend for you. There will be future workforce will be a task-based workforce rather than just having somebody who is there in the office and then you go on distribution. So the task-based work culture is coming up. New ways of work culture will definitely see that people are now preferring, almost 65% of the people are uh, preferring to work from home. Latest trend in IT industry is that in Pune, a lot of software industry, when they're expanding, because a lot of technological changes are coming, it IT industry want to expand its manpower. Rather than creating infrastructure, office, asking to people to come to Karadi or Hinzodi, I think, they are started with the model that 150 hours of work per month and the fixed amount of salary has been paid. So if the laptop is available with the student uh, who is doing internship or he's ready to uh, take the laptop on rent, I think he's able to work from 150 hours from anywhere in a small village or a city where internet facility is available. And I think he's able to get good amount of money in spite coming to city has a little bit more salary, but I think when he's back there, he's not giving any overheads as, as per the stay is concerned, transportation is concerned, hectic schedule is concerned. He can do that work from home. So that is a culture. Now it is technology driven, basically. Everything is technology driven. So it become more easy that more participation, more inclusion is happening now in industry. Uh, two, three reports I was going through when I've uh, gone through the title of this is that this building strategic resilience is very important. To meet the challenges posed by pandemic, business around the world had to react in agile and decisive ways. As we move into the next phase, now it's time for businesses to seek out and seize the opportunities emerging in the recovery. This involves conducting after action review to collect data and insight on lessons learned from the pandemic. And then using these priorities actions to enhance the business value today and business strategic resilience for tomorrow. Businesses that take this step now will be well-placed to capitalize more effectively on the opportunity raising the post-COVID-19 recovery and continue winning in their marketplaces as a greater certainly sustainability in return. COVID has wake up call for all businesses in hotel industry. I think we know that the parties and then swimming pool and other accessories have gone back and then a smaller group meeting and a swimming pool has no more exists in many of the hotels and saloons and all these things. So these are changed. So the disruption, unless by the worst health crisis more than a century, has ricocheted through every sector of the economy from financial services giant on Wall Street to small shops and restaurants on the main street. The aftershocks will be have profound impact on many aspects of commerce into the future. Importantly, coronavirus has also accelerated the significant shift in the complex relationship between business and society, underscoring the need of transformation toward more inclusive from capitalism. The fallout of COVID-19, of course, varies sustainably from sector to sector in few industries. Notably, technology and healthcare have benefited significantly from the start tailwinds. As demand has soared, the product ranging from online conference call to home entertainment to more mix and base vaccines. On other sectors such as travel and hospital, there has been a catastrophic slump on demand, making a return of pre-pandemic environment unimaginable for this foreseeable future. In between this extreme, there are vast weights from the world's manufacturing and service industries where the task now is to adjust to the stock of the past year and find the novel ways to thrive in the post-pandemic era. For many manufacturers, the key challenge is to adopt the fast enough to keep up the pace of technological advances that will shape the factories of tomorrow. This includes incorporating artificial intelligence into operations, sharing data and developing diligent traceability system needed to build the comprehensive resilience. Nevertheless, despite of many differences, there are some common themes facing leader or all company considering their paths back to the sustainable growth. The challenges and the uncertainty, they must wake up and include future remote working and accelerated digital solution in their organization. The technology allowing such advances to bring the giant opportunity, but also significant threats from protecting against the cyber criminal to preventing the soul of the company if the employees can no longer meet in person or over coffee. 
leading executives highlight five key points that they will help organization to respond to the crisis when everything is priority nothing is a priority and as executives struggle to make sense of the post covid business environment many find themselves leading from this gray area of indecision two years ago relatively few executive consider competencies as a crisis management enterprise agility cost management workforce resiliency innovation or cash flow management as critically important to their business today however <laughs> the top executive tell some different tale so i think the research put by ibm that four things are important first workforce safety and security cost management and enterprise ability i was listening to a, a concept where a medical conference was holding and they were trying to come out with a theme what which is called as hospi mall there is a mall where all type of medical facilities will be available including entertainment facility so you can enter there in the morning and then in your family wherever they want to get which kind of treatment done which will be done on the basis and help of technology and you will have everything available in the single umbrella where you can do the x ray medical treatment your beautification treatment your small operation and so many things is possible under one umbrella so i think the new thing and as rightly uh, explained by uh, sahastra buddhe sir that uh, now the it, uh, education is becoming ballless education the gist of this kind of new education is access to any university any institute across the world so you can have any combination of subject to make your career done as multi point entry multi point exit is possible we are breaking the walls between faculty of commerce management science and technology now any subject is accessible student can learn any subject which is available on a physical or digital or digital mode any technology can be used to learn those subject it is easily possible it's a choice of user to use the technology then any device can be used student can use a laptop mobile or pc or any other device any time the learner can learn at any point of time as per his requirement and any one can learn there is no restriction as per the eligibility is concerned maybe for the formal courses their eligibility is there but i think learning is now accessible to everyone so i think this all changes the future workforce will have more dynamic approach task based approach more agility for the working and i think the deliberation which will held in this two days conference will definitely encompass all this thought process and definitely give an insight to all our Uh, stakeholders and those who are present and attending the conference that how we can take the higher education idea and how the new business will be and definitely help us to get new insight into the business i am thankful for the organizers and wish this conference all the best thank you thank you sir thank you for your insights on the new task based work culture and the change that is happening all over post covid and also in the various programs introduced at sppu to be in sync with current trends and you rightly said that covid was a wake up call for many businesses and it touched each individual of society to throw more light on the novel ways which will shape the future of our country we have with us mr g k pillai who is an alumnus of bits pilani and an acclaimed management leader having more than 48 years of professional experience in the mm -hmm. manufacturing sector in leadership positions in both the public sector and private sector industries at present he is the managing director and ceo of janam tv prior to that mr pillai had been the managing director and ceo of walchand nagar industries for the last 8 years he was also the chairman and managing director of two of india's largest engineering public sector companies heavy engineering corporation limited ranchi and hmt machine tools limited bangalore He has also been the chief executive of the U.S. joint venture Fisher Sunwar Limited, Chennai. He is a strong proponent of innovation and industry academia collaboration, which can play a major role in the country's atmanirbhar Bharat. A recipient of large number of awards in both national and international forums, Mr. Pillai has been a national level hockey player too. Apart from the professional career. Mr Pillai is now fully active in various activities for the benefit of society some of the present responsibilities are he is the nagar sanchalak of rss in palakkad 
He is the president of Desh Sevya Bharati for Palakkar, the chairman of Samkalp IAS Academy, Kannur, chairman of Bharadwaj Education and Cultural Trust, Palakkar. I request sir to please take over. Good morning, everybody. The most respected honorable professor Anil Sahasrabude, chairman of AICTE, Dr. Somna Patil, Secretary of Dr. D.Y. Patil Unitech Society, Pune, Dr. Parak Kalkar, the Dean, Faculty of Commerce and Management, SPPU, Pune, Dr. Meghna Bilare, the Director of D.Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research, Dr. Vishal Wadachkar, the Associate Director of D.Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research. The other dignitaries who are attending this program and a large number of delegates. And when I saw the count, it is almost more than 270 delegates and participants are taking part in today's this inaugural function, which is a great achievement. So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me for this wonderful and useful program uh, conducted by D.Y. Patel Institute of Management and Research and organized in conjunction along with AICTE, a national conference. The subject is very apt, redefining business management post COVID and the technological and economic challenges. It's very apt, very needed, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of deliberations in the next one or two days, where you will be able to understand what we are facing, what are the challenges, and how we are able to overcome challenges. I was also in interesting to see that among the speakers and among the uh, most of the audience, every almost everybody is a doctor, a PhD, perhaps in engineering or management. I'm the only person who is slightly off the record because I am purely a technological person, right from the industry, having almost about 48 years of experience. So my talk will be more uh, on the realistic pattern, on the realistic issues, what business management, both organizations and the institutions will have to make certain changes to meet the requirement of today's world post-COVID. In 1970, Alvin Toffler, the author, businessman, futurist, whatever you say he was, he had written a book called Future Shock. Uh, and I'm sure he did expect that there will be a volatility in the world. There'll be a lot of change in the world. But I am very sure even he would never have imagined in the 50 years hence writing that book in 1970, the world will be so much topsy-turvy that the way we do not only business, the way we do anything, including simple things like greeting one another, even in greeting a neighbor, the way it will change. The world has changed. I am not going into detail. But definitely, when we were told by our Honorable Prime Minister on the March 24th of 2020 about the impending lockdown, everybody did, was very shocked. Nobody knew what is there for them tomorrow. People thought it may be one month. People thought it may be three months. Nobody exactly knew the severity of the impact of this pandemic. At that time, I'll just take you a minute or two for that. At that time, what was the challenge amongst all the leadership? When I'm saying all the leadership, mainly business leadership, but at the same time, leadership of educational institutions, leadership of any type of even government leadership. There are two big challenges. Rather, one big challenge is the survival. The survival challenges was perhaps one of the most important survival issues when we say. 
people did not know when actually they started having the impact of covid they did not know whether their organization whether they will survive so first challenge was survival issues how to tackle but at the same time if you only look at survival and you do not look at revival issues it becomes more difficult so two challenges at that time for the business community we had two survival issues and parallelly revival issues and as a citizen of india i can very well say that we feel so happy that our government our leadership at the national level has really made the first part a smooth transition the survival issues i am talking in a larger in a larger holistic picture so the government initiatives has been fantastic at the same time you will find that the resilience of the population of the country has also helped to a large extent in combating the survival issues and working towards the re revival issues and in that business houses educational institution perhaps as dr sahasrabuddha said educational institutions are actually the foundation for any country's growth and the educational institution and particularly your institute dy patil has also played a very major role in changing immediately various methodologies and as dr dr kalkar again did mention we have been fast enough see actually it comes how we are fast how we are swift in one year if we are able to bring in five new management programs required by the industry or required by the business community that itself is a great thing so what i wanted to say is the the uh, resilience of the country the foresightedness of the people the foresighted of the scientists including the development of vaccines which has actually made us with stand having such a huge population of more than 135 crores people we were still in a position to today talk and be a leader of the world give directions to the world that is one part that is a survival instinct the second part which is today very important as i said you you survive but then if you don't revive then you won't succeed you will fall you will fail so that is the second part which is equally challengeable so what happens is the life has changed for the last 23 months we have come to understand that what we have been doing perhaps we may not be able to do in the days ahead or the years ahead so what one fundamental thing which everybody has to accept it may not sound good but one has to accept return to business as usual before covid 19 is not possible that is my limited knowledge and i think that 100% return to normalcy of business before covid will not be possible then what do we do then what do we do the business the business will is expected to reengineer the way they operate to build trust to create value for the society and mitigate long term risk when i talk about long term risk and mitigation there's a limit to which somebody can do all big business houses had actually a risk analysis being done in in various uh, you know organizations nobody ever imagined a covid can become such a big risk it may still happen something may still come nobody knows what is in future but thinking that something is definitely going to be bad we can plan for future we had to always plan for future that what we can do how we can do what is the difference between a man and a machine we talk about machine machine does certain things but the way the man can react to a situation i don't think any machine can do man can make the machine work even if you look at your simple educational arena nobody would have imagined that we will be running classes across the globe on online platforms schools even primary school secondary school they all run on that so what i meant was man is god has endowed the human being with something which is kept here which no machine however smart the machine may be there can compete with man because man only man only makes machines i'm not going to that topic so one of the fundamental changes which happens in on account of 
COVID and the post-COVID activity in business and industry and organization is till now many had a, a model of command and control. That was the model. You know, the executive, the chief executives always think that command and control was a successful model. But today that has changed. Today it's actually trust and delegation. This is important because you, you trust a person. You delegate the job to such a level that people are sitting at home and doing the work. You can't even go and check what is he doing. But that is one fundamental change. So the earlier methodology, earlier model of command and control is actually gone out. And we are really have to work how well we can trust our team. That is important. There are methodologies of trusting. I'll come to that a bit later. But fundamentally, trust and delegation is today's buzzword. Executives, chief executives, business leaders have to work on that. So that was one point. The second point, which is very important. So when you talk about today's topic, post-COVID, what are the challenges, both technological and uh, economic? When you talk about technological challenges, there will definitely a very important aspect which I am going to talk, which is with regard to the human challenges. Actually, there has been never a never a issue like this where the human being has been affected to such a large extent, cutting across nations, cutting across strata of society, cutting across knowledge-based people or little, little knowledge people. So apart from technology and uh, economic impact, a little bit on human or human relations, human resources will also, I will just touch upon. Uh, I will not take much time than what has been actually allotted to me, but definitely. So what happens is when you talk about technology, the dependence on digitalization or digital technology will decide the success rate of any organization or business today. That is a fact which is really known. We know a simple case, you know, there are some small shopkeepers who were there in, in our, our houses. They were not even having a credit card machine two years ago. They will refuse to, or there even people who had credit card machine, they will say if the bill is more than 300 rupees or 500 rupees, then only we'll, uh, we'll accept credit card. So the technological changes which has happened today, you can sit at home, the same shopkeeper or the same vegetable vendor is ready to accept the technology. That is on a lower level scale. In an organization level, larger organization, middle class organization, middle level organization, the digital transformation is characterized by the fusion of advanced technology and the integration of physical and digital system. This technological change has to be adopted by every organization. If you do not do that, as somebody just mentioned before me, that if you are not changing, you will not survive. So what is, what is clearly needed is the industry still now, you know, industry 4.0 was a very good subject to talk in various seminars. People were not implementing the industry 4.0, but this COVID has really made industries to implement industry 4.0, bringing innovation, bringing technological advancement, bringing IoT, bringing artificial intelligence. So this is the first part that is digital dependence on digitalization. Now here is one challenge which is there for educational institutions. Need of the hour is available of skilled manpower to handle digital technology. You know, even management graduates, which used to come about three years, four years back, many of them were either a BCom, then doing their MBA, or a BA, BA, then doing MBA. Today, what has happened is the need of the hour is to get skill set in the workforce. So what I emphasize or I request the management institutes, and I'm sure institutes like DY Patil, which is very progressive, and again, with AICT being so progressive in this field, same with SPPU, educational institutions should play a role and where they have to make compulsory a digital program on whatever way, even it could be a graduate in a BA course, but somewhere, some sort of a digitalization 
methodology teaching could be incorporated because everybody will need a digital knowledge that is one part second part also which again i am requesting the educational institution organizations are having people already having people they are not tech savvy they are not digital savvy so apart from your own students if you are able to tie up with industries and teach and train their existing manpower into various methodologies various courses if you are able to offer for bringing digitalization in a larger scale in industries i think that will be a success it will be a win win for both it will be it is needed by the industry it will be required for education educational institutions to really come and offer new courses i am not talking about those executive courses one year executive executive mba no it could be a short term program where you can teach people you can explain them what is digitalization how do we use it what is artificial intelligence where they can definitely use in their own organizations so that is the second part now having said this about technology and the technological requirement two or three important points which is which is very critical you know the survey has today global survey has said that remote working is definitely about 20% though people are still coming back on an offline way but over the year additional 20% people will be working on an online basis offline sorry online basis on a remote working now this as dr sasrabuddin did mention even dr talkar did mention this is the in thing it helps two ways one a development of villages will happen when a development of village happens the society will improve the standard of living will improve more shopping malls etc but what is needed there is infrastructure will be needed that is number one you will need roads you will need some facilities outside in the villages and the most important is again development of it facilities in villages many times today at least some years back we used to even go to make a call we used to go to some corner of the house with a signal near right so i think one important thing which the country will need and the industries will need is high end technological uh, quality of internet wifi telecom so that is one part the second part which is equally important is 32% of the organization very important 32% of the organizations are replacing full time employees with part time employees it's actually double edged sword when you talk about taking full time and part time employees it helps and it doesn't help so you know earlier people used to have a guarantee oh i started work in this company next like 30 years i'll work there that is not that if a advantage of a part time employee it helps women employees to a very large extent there are many women who want to actually take up a job after doing a graduation or a post graduation in colleges today they are unable to take up a full time job because of various reasons family pressures children etc this will definitely open avenues for organizations to hire this intelligent women for a part time maybe four hours per day from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock so the way the challenges will be there for both full time employees they should not think that for them employment is a lifetime for that employment is a lifetime they have to really look that yes i have to perform otherwise i will not survive third a very important point which i want to say technology how technology is going to when i said about hr 16% of the employers are actually using technology to monitor people who are working at home we think people are working at home can no there's always a feeling are they working at home are they really doing it what are the methodologies there are lots of methodologies which has already come virtual checking of in and out tracking work on computer usage monitoring employees email which they are sending to their customers or in the interdepartmental so monitoring employees how much they are able to bring an output so why i said is technology is needed even in such area so these are the challenges how technology will 
help organizations to monitor because you need to monitor even the employees. A one important point till now there is a there is a critical word separation of critical skill and critical role. I am again repeating separation between critical role and critical skill. People used to always think that in any organization, this role is very critical. I think that criticality of role, more important than that, is criticality of skill. So how, if a person is skilled fully, he can do any role. So that change in mindset, and again, here, educational institutions can really help in developing skills, skills which is needed of various organizations. If a person is skilled, he can fit in any role. So that is it. one more. Point. And last point, last point. In a business, in a business, the employer's role, till now an employer's role was like just providing employment, getting you know a, uh, goods from his uh, business, making uh, money for the, uh, for the company. No, COVID has said that the employer's role has changed. Employer has, is actually becoming more sympathetic. It is not just business. It is not just profit. He has become sympathetic. People used to be very tough with the, you know, giving an example, for, with regard to the leaves. Today, the employer has become friendly. He, he understands that, yes, there is, he may not be having, he may uh, a sickness, but his family may be having it. So that is one. Second, employers have also started realizing their, their role in society. What they have to do in society to make society withstand all these turbulences. Third, employers have also decided and employers have understood that they have to be flexible. When I'm saying flexible, you know, many industries, when there is suddenly a shortage of oxygen plant in the country, they stopped everything and they started making oxygen plant. When there was initially nobody was having even manufacturing masks or sanitizer, industry has gone ahead. So the role of industry today will be definitely a different. Last one point I want to take and I'll just close my talk. Today what we do is we are still trying to conserve cost because there's the uncertainty. When you try to conserve cost, we design a unit, design a business with efficiency of designing for designing. Optimum design, but that is not always good because when there is a variation, when there is something you know, unknown happening, a very uh, efficient organization, if there is no scope, no room available for resilience, is that it will not be able to withstand the changes like what has happened during the COVID issues. So organizations, for them, the business model will differ. When you talk about economy, you know, till some time back, we are talking, you know, the globe, the whole world is our market. The world is a marketplace. But COVID has told us, world is not your marketplace. You cannot depend. You know, if I make an item, say in, say in Kerala, perhaps I may not be even able to send it to Maharashtra or Assam because COVID has said the supply chain issues suddenly can be disturbed by if there is a restriction some moment of the travel, of the uh, transport, that is one. Similarly, global, you may not be able to, you may be making an item for an export to Brazil, and that may be your company's strategy, but suddenly a thing like COVID comes and says that there is no travel to Brazil. So what I meant was the, the theory of world as a single market cannot be taken for granted. The organization had to really look at in his area, and that actually comes what the Prime Minister talks about, Atmanirbhar Bharat. You make in India, for India at least, you may not be able to sell it outside. Similarly, if you have a, if you do not make in India, you want some items from import, you may not be able to get it from import it from anywhere else. Maybe the COVID or maybe something else comes in some different countries, maybe United States or maybe Russia or maybe somewhere else. You may not be able to get those spare parts. So the market, though, we can say there is a global market, but Indian market. So the Atmanirbhar Bharat comes into play 
here that we have to make things in the country if the country has to really survive. We know the oxygen plant, we know the kits we are importing from China and other places because we were not making it here and it was difficult even to get it. So these are some of the basic issues which I thought I will share with you. And the last important point which I wanted to make, actually tell all my audience, all my faculty, that post-COVID, a challenge will be there in every aspect. One cannot, and the leadership, the leadership has to play a very important role. Leadership has to really work with the whole team. He cannot, until and unless he is able to get a, a, a what do you call, a joint support from all the stakeholders, not only the employees, all the stakeholders, the society plays a very major role. So these are some of the great challenge which we are going to face in the, in the days ahead. Rural economy is an area where we have to really put a lot of focus. Courses in rural, rural management will help because you are able to develop the rural economy, the rural, rural infrastructure. So as somebody said, technology is the driver. Technology is the only driver. But for making that, human relations will play a very major role. Though I said in the beginning of my talk, return to business as usual is not possible. Do not take that in the pessimistic way. Take it in the optimistic way. Be optimistic. We may not be returning back as what we were there two years back, but what we are going to do today or what we are going to do tomorrow, definitely that will be more useful for the organization, for the people, for the society. And in that, I'm again closing my talk. Educational institutions till now were thinking of only giving degrees to the student. They have to change that. Educational institutions will be the foundation of future business in the country. Instead of giving degrees, you have to give skills. Instead of giving degrees, you have to make a man ready not to do one job, but a man should be able to withstand uncertainties which can happen like issues like COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, with these words, I would like to once again congratulate the D.Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research for arranging such a wonderful uh, conference with such a important and relevant topic. And I hope the two-day deliberation will really bring in a lot of positive thoughts, both for the industry, for the humanity, and for the educational institution. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable guidance on realistic issues. And you really explained us with the simple examples what COVID had changed. You also highlighted the importance of terms like survival, revival, and the role of government and education institutions during this pandemic. Thank you once again, sir. Now, I take privilege to introduce our Associate Director, Dr. Vishal Vadatskar, sir, who is currently working with Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Management and Research as an Associate Director. He's BE Chemical, MBA Marketing, and in PhD in Marketing and Supply Chain Management. He has around 17 years of experience in industry and academics. During his entire professional career, he has always been among the fastest growing professional in every organization. He is recipient of various awards at different levels. He has got an opportunity to visit and work in more than eight countries during his career for various professional assignments. He says that the real measure of his success is the number of student, students who started their business ventures and he has mentored the number of lives he has positively influenced during his career. He attributes his success to his honesty, integrity, commitment towards work, compassion for customers and his habit of performing professional duties by being emotional sensitive. I request Dr. Vishal Vadaskar sir to 
to propose a vote of thanks. Secretary of Dr. D. Vapati, Dr. Somnath Patil, sir. Today's chief guest and chairman of AICT, Honorable Professor Anil Sastra, Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University, Dr. Parag Karkar, sir. <clears throat> Our second guest of honor for today, MD and CEO of Janam TV and Director and Advisor of Balchan Nagar Industries Pune, Mr. G.K. Pillai, sir. Conference Coordinator and Director of DYP IMR, Dr. Meghna Bilare, ma'am. Directors and Principals of various Jayapati Group Institutes. <clears throat> All the faculty and staff members at DYP IMR and the participants from across the nation. I, Dr. Vishal Vadaskar, wish you a very good morning and welcome you all to this AICT sponsored two days national conference. I feel extremely lucky to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on today's occasion. First of all, we would like to thank the Almighty God who instilled this idea and provided us with the necessary motivation to organize a conference on such an important topic. We are very grateful to AICT for making this scheme of GOC available and providing us with a chance to conceptualize, organize, and manage a conference on a topic which is among the most important agendas for today's time. We are indebted to our management, including Dr. P.D. Patil sir and Dr. Somnath Patil sir, for keeping no stone unturned in guiding us and providing us with whatever is needed for successful organization of this conference. We are particularly very much thankful to today's Chief Guest Honorable Professor Dr. Anil Sastrabhudya sir for gracing the inauguration of this conference with his presence and valuable guidance. Being Chairman of AICT, sir is one of the busiest persons. Still, sir, spare time to bless and guide all of us. We will forever be indebted to you, sir, for this gesture of yours. We are extremely thankful to both the guest of honors for today, Dr. Parak Kalka, sir, and Mr. G.K. Pillai, sir. We know that they are very busy professionals and hence pressed for time. Still, they found time out of their tidy schedules to grace us and this event. Nobody in the rightful mind can deny the importance of organize, organizing committee. Because of the untiring work of all faculty and staff members at DYP IMR, we are going to witness an amazing conference these two days. We would like to thank all of them for their hard work. We would be very thankful to uh, Dr. Meghna Bilare for her monitoring the organizing committee and providing a relentless support to them. We are very happy to have uh, received an overwhelming response from faculties and researchers across the nation for this conference. We are thankful to them and wish them a resourceful treat through this conference. They say what starts well, ends well as well. With this, once again, on behalf of entire DYP IMR, I would like to thank everybody involved directly or indirectly in organizing this conference. And I would like to hand it over back to the anchoring team. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I request everyone to rise for national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jaya hai Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravid, Uttkal, Vanga, Vindya, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchchal, Jaladhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Aashish, Maage, Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya Jaya 
जय जय हे थैंक यू बिलाई सर थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू पराग कालकर सर पिलाई सर थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर बीइंग विद अस कमनाथ सर थैंक यू थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर ग्रेसिंग द ओकेजन थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सहस्रबुद्ध सर थैंक यू पराग सर थैंक यू जीके पिलाई सर सो हियर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो हियर वी डिक्लेअर दैट द इनॉग्रल सेरेमनी ऑफ दिस टू डेज कॉन्फ्रेंस over thank you venandong thank you all thanks a lot